Thank you, sir. Good afternoon to all on the dais, co-presenters, and good afternoon to the audience. Let me first of all thank the organizers of WPTC for giving me an opportunity to showcase the digital transformation at Kochi Refinery. For the benefit of the youngsters sitting at the back, BPCL has three refineries, one in Kochi, one in Mumbai, and one in Bina. And Kochi Refinery happens to be the biggest public sector uh, refinery in India with a capacity of 15.5 uh, million metric tons capacity. And uh, so the, the chairperson as well as the, the pre my previous speakers have uh, set the ball going with COP26, net, net zero and usage of uh, digital transformation at for uh, asset reliability and all. So, I will take you through the journey of uh, digital transformation at uh, Kochi Refinery. And I would like to s start with saying that no transformation is very easy. It is always a tough journey and there will be always some falls. We'll, we need to get up and get going. There will be some failures. We need to learn from that and then get going. So we are uh, fortunate enough to excuse me, it is this, yeah. yeah. <coughs> so we have. Uh, our senior management is very serious on the digital transformation and that is how uh, we have a vision, strategic vision by name Go GDP in that the D stands for the digital. So this, uh, this shows the commitment of the VPCL's management for digital transformation across the refineries as well as the marketing network. Now, but having the vision is not, su not only sufficient we need to percolate down this to the bottom most level. So we have a system called Digital Champions and uh, Refineries, where actually uh, from all the operations department, all the domains, few youngsters are identified who are actually tech savvy and uh, are ready to implement these kind of initiatives. So these champions are driving the initiatives at Kochi Refinery. So as you can see, at the top most level, there is a strategic vision for digital transformation and it is clearly percolating down to the bottom most level and we are trying to bring in a cultural change. It is not only just one department say digital or other IS department which is driving this, actually this has to be driven across all the departments and that is what uh, we are doing. And when we are uh, doing this digital transformation, the focus areas are uh, listed here. Yield improvement is uh, first and the foremost. As you can, uh, you would have seen in the market, the crude oil prices vary from say 70 to 130 depending on the market condition and world conditions. And every drop of oil is very crucial to us. And a molecule which is, convert, which is uh, separated in crude distillation and vacuum distillation units as well as converted in the secondary processing units it has to land in the right location. Otherwise, there will be a huge value loss. So the digital transformation is helping us to improve this yields also. And my colleague Satya has mentioned regarding various energy, energy consumption points, whether it is steam, whether it is fuel, whether it is power. And apart from that, there are inherent losses within the refinery units. So the digital transformation is again focusing on reducing these energy consumptions as well as reducing the losses. And uh, a colleague from uh, the panelist from Adani has, was talking at length about the reliability improvement. So we have invested a lot in a lot of assets by putting up various process plants, whether it is crude distillation unit or the secondary processing units. So unless those units run, they don't make money. So the they have to be run at their maximum capacity so that we get value out of these uh, process units or the equipments, whether it is a compressor, whether it is a pump. 
So this, these, unit, these equipment have to be run continuously so that we make money out of that. And this digital transformation, as he has rightly mentioned, is helping us improve the reliability of this equipment. Now coming to the productivity improvement, a lot of mundane activities are being carried out in the refineries, maybe without, with, which does not require much of uh, human intelligence. And in these cases, robotic process automation can help and we are seeing huge benefits in terms of savings of number of hours per day per manpower with the implementation of robotic process automation. And now, last uh, but not the least is the improvement in the HSSC. So HSSC with the safety, I will maybe talk about it later, safety is another focus area for refinery digital transformation. Now let me just take you through a typical refinery, any refinery across India. If you look at the plant operation, uh, two to three decades back, we have deployed distributed control system for process control, replacing the pneumatic controls, and people have implemented electronic logs, electronic permit. These are available at the plant level. Now if you look at the plant optimization of the plant, to reduce OPEX and all and yield improvement. We have advanced process controls implemented again about two decades back and real-time optimizers are also implemented at many refineries and we have uh, simulation models uh, to do what-if analysis for various conditions and we have almost all the refineries are having uh, historians. Uh, these historians actually are collecting data from various process units just to give uh, glimpse of that any refinery will have may, maybe some 10 to 15 process units and each unit may be having a sensor to the extent of say about 5000 comprising of say temperature, pressure, flow. So all these data is being stored in the real time uh, data historians in most of the refineries and as people have been saying data is new oil so we are sitting on a huge uh, a repository of data which can be used for our digital transformation and that is about the plant optimization level. Now coming to the refinery optimization, we have long back implemented our planning uh, linear program tools, scheduling and blending and ERP also we have implemented long back. Why I am saying all these, all these things is we have been undergoing digital transformation long back, maybe two to three decades back, we have been doing this digital transformation. But before this digitalization buzzword came in, we have been doing this, the industry has been doing this under the name of say automation or optimization. But anyhow, this is not sufficient at the current moment. We need to take a big leap with the advent of new technologies that is uh, coming into the market. So from typical refinery, what we are seeing is going to see is an intelligent refinery where all these new technologies are going to be deployed for benefiting the refinery in terms of its ease of operations as well as making more money for the stakeholders. Let me just uh, go through the different parts of this. First one is the AIML and uh, users, I mean all the presenters have been talking about AIML. So we are using this to improve our energy performance as well as the safety performance. And AR, VR, we are uh, using this for our uh, training as well as uh, remote maintenance applications. And we are sitting on a big data, all the refineries are sitting on a big data. So a lot of analysis can be done and meaningful insights can be brought about. Uh, if I may give an example of say uh, uh, refineries process different kinds of crudes with different densities, different sulfur contents. So what is the best operating point today for the crude oil that is being processed? These kind of analytics are possible with the latest technologies. Now coming to IIoT, IIoT has helped, I think uh, at uh, Sir was talking about one hundredth of the cost today we can uh, I mean deploy wireless monitors. So this, this, this is helping us improve the uh, reliability and uh, robotic process automation under various, in various departments like say finance, HR, K 
can actually take out their mundane work and then replace it with maybe they can do some, some more productive work and the availability of cameras and the video analytics over that. So, that is helping us improve our safety as well as productivity. Additive manufacturing is uh, taking out, uh, taking up uh, in a big way, even though we have not gone big, actually people are talking about, yeah. people are talking about making the rotors using big rotors, big uh, compressors, uh, rotors with additive 3D manufacturing. And then uh, we are uh, taking, uh, <coughs> using these wearables to take remote support from foreign locations in uh, one of our petrochemical complexes during the COVID times, when we, the licenses could not come to the refinery due to travel restrictions. We have effectively used these tools to uh, commission the process units at the petrochemicals. And the cyber security, a lot of people have been talking about, this is very, very important. And then we are use, using drones for safety surveillance as well as uh, thermal inspection, thermography and uh, inspection of uh, process equipment. Inspection, uh, suppose uh, unit is under shutdown and then if you want to have a quick view of what is inside before a man enters. A quick drone flight can be taken and a preliminary assessment can be done. Similarly, if a unit is running and but if you want to have a thermal profile at a height, instead of raising a big scaffolding, it is very easy to fly the drone and get, uh, get this uh, thermography. And then my colleague Satya was also mentioning about uh, digital twins. We are uh, using this extensively for optimization of our yield as well as energy. So, this is in an overall nutshell, this is what we are, the intelligent refinery we are trying to achieve and we are uh, making big strides in this. Let me just uh, briefly touch upon few things, uh, I think uh, in view of uh, paucity of time. So, this is IIoT is one <coughs> application where we are monitoring the PSVs from the process units in case of any leakage alert will be generated and it can be immediately corrected. So, this is helping us in reducing our losses from the refinery. Similarly, the reliability and corrosion monitoring. So, we have sensors which are externally fitted which does not require any work, uh, in, uh, any hot work to be carried out for insert, inserting this and these are actually on a real time basis measuring the thickness of various pipelines and then this can be deployed in very critical areas where uh, corrosion is expected. And coming to uh, AI ML models, so uh, our chair was talking about hydrogen is going to be very critical to our net zero journey and uh, thing. so we are uh, having prediction for our hydrogen demand for various hydro processing units. Similarly, we are uh, predicting our quality of the various streams using uh, artificial intelligence and ML models. Again, equipment health he has already talked about and uh, when we are operating the heaters, heater skin temperature is another parameter which we are predicting. Now, I will just uh, take uh, the example of AIML for advanced process control. So, whatever AIML models are there, it can be used for controlling the plant also. All these days, we have not deployed this for controlling, it was only available as an input to the operations personnel. But uh, recently, we have successfully integrated whatever ML model we have created to again we are taking it to our RTDB and plant DCS and then it is being used for advanced process control in one of our FCC units. Now, this is another case of IOT with AI. We have talked about IOT cases, we have talked about AI cases. Now, this is a case of improvement in our HSC with uh, IOT. So, we recently had a turnaround of our uh, major units, IREP units. Six major units underwent shutdown and around 14,000 workers were working for about 30 days. So, monitoring the health and safety of these people is critical because any incident can derail the overall shutdown process. So, we have extensively used cameras as well as drones for surveillance and this footage was being continuously sent to a cloud server where pre-processing was done and final processing was done and then with the imp 
with the help of AI, all the violations, whether it is a personal protective equipment violation or whether it is a uh, unsafe condition, any other unsafe condition, any other unsafe act. So, these things were getting detected and then immediately alerts were being sent and actions were being taken. So, this is a very big success story in the last few months for us and uh, this, this system, yeah. So, this system has, with the help of this system, we have uh, detected close to about uh, 2000 violations in the last turnaround. So, let me uh, just close with uh, saying that. So, we are uh, having this digital transformation with uh, improvements starting from crude procurement, operations, scheduling, blending, as well as inspection and maintenance. So, this uh, digital transformation is touching across all the departments and all domains of operation. So thank you. Thank you. With this, I will conclude.